Many of you know that I think dividend stocks offer retirees a number of attractive characteristics, but it's not without its negatives. And there's definitely smart people that would make a strong argument against dividend stocks. So let's talk about what those smart people would say and how I would respond to that. And this is not financial advice, but this is definitely information that I think people need to know as they're thinking about how their portfolio is invested in retirement. Okay, so the, the case against dividend stocks is, you know, over time, growth stocks, depending on the time period, can outperform dividend stocks. And people would say that, you know, growth stocks are gonna outperform because the reason companies don't pay dividends is because they have other opportunities for growth that they want to fund, that they think are gonna get their shareholders, their investors, outsized returns. And then they would also say, you know, the dividends aren't free money. It comes out of the profitability of the companies and, and that profitability, that cash flow, either goes to the investors or go to these other opportunities. So they would argue, rightfully so, let's say a company has a share price of $100 and they pay a $3 dividend. You know, in theory, when they pay that $3 dividend, that stock price should go down to $97. So they would say, you know, if you want to raise $2,000 a month, why not just sell the stocks and, and access the cash when you need it? Why not let the company use the cash flows for the opportunities that they see fit? And, and that's a reasonable argument. But what ends up happening is most people, the reason that they underperform or they don't reach their financial goals is not because they're in the wrong investment tools, but it's because of their own investor behavior. They make decisions either out of fear or out of greed. So when the market goes down, maybe they're fearful and they sell their stocks. Or when the market goes up, they tend to change their allocation and chase what worked last year. So the nice thing about dividend stocks is you're getting this steady cash flow. There's no guarantees, but for the most part, fairly predictable companies like to give a predictable dividend. So you've got this steady cash flow coming in. Hopefully, if you choose your dividend stocks wisely, those cash flows are increasing at a rate higher than inflation. So over time, let's say that you need $20,000 this year uh, to fund your expenses, to fund your retirement. And in 10 years, let's say instead of $20,000, now because of inflation, you need $30,000. Well, depending on the companies that you choose, oftentimes these companies are raising the rate of cash flows that they give to their investors at a rate higher than inflation. So in 10 years, it still feels to you like you've got that $20,000 that you're spending today. So one of the main attractive benefits to me of dividend stock investing is you have this, hopefully, as I said earlier, predictable cash flows coming in and you can decouple yourself a little bit from constantly making the decision, you know, should I sell some stock now to fund my retirement expenses or should I hold on to them? Or let's say the market's down 10 or 15% and you were planning on selling some stock for the cash flows. If the stock's down, you might be tempted and say, I don't wanna sell the stocks right now um, because the stock's down. And so maybe you don't use that money to enjoy and use it the way that you want it to in retirement. Conversely, when the stock is up, you might say, oh, the stock is doing so well. I don't want to sell the, I don't want to sell the stock now. I want to buy more of it. So it, it takes the decision making um, away from the person, away from the retiree, and it just kind of puts it on autopilot. It makes it easier for you to do the types of things that you want to do and follow your plan over the long term. And I, I want to get back to the argument, you know, can't you just sell your stocks when you want and use that cash flows? Yes, but you know, sometimes you look at it and, and companies are chasing the, the opportunities that they see and maybe they're wrong. 
you know, management has a better idea of what the opportunities are in their industry. But what management doesn't know is how you would spend that money. And it's not just about optimizing the return each and every day. It's also about optimizing your life and living the life that, that you want to be able to live. And the management of the company, you know, they're decoupled from all of that, obviously. Okay, so, you know, the, the challenge then becomes, how do you invest in dividend companies? And again, this isn't financial advice. My goal with this channel is to give you some things to think about. I don't know your financial situation, so I can't give you specific financial advice. What I can share with you though, is when it comes to picking dividend stocks, it's really important the companies that you choose. There tends to be two types of companies that are dividend payers. One is operationally excellent companies. They have a strong business, they have strong cash flows, they're running a solid business. They tend to be a little more mature and they tend to be you know, keeping some of the operating cash flows to fund future opportunities for the company. But they also have excess cash flows and they've developed the discipline that they need in order to be able to share that uh, with their shareholders. So that tends to be one type of company. The other type of company that is candidly kind of playing a game, they know people are shopping uh, for dividend rates. So they do everything they can to increase the dividends that they pay out and, and maybe even finance that dividend with debt. And I personally don't like that. I like the dividends of a company to come from solid operating cash flow as opposed to what I call financial engineering. Because, you know, the challenge with that, if they're issuing debt in order to pay out a dividend to the shareholders, you know, that game only goes on for so long. Eventually, the banks are gonna say, you know, if there's a credit crisis, we're like now, when interest rates have gone up. So all of a sudden, they're, I'm just making up a number, they're six or 7% high dividend pair doesn't sound so attractive when you can get, as I record this, 5% in an FDIC uh, insured bank account. You gotta shop for those, but they are available. So what happens to those financial engineering companies that are, power, that are borrowing money in order to pay the dividend, their cost of capital has gone up because interest rates have gone up. They can't access inexpensive capital. And at the same time, there's less demand for their dividends because we all have more choices. So I really prefer solid, operationally effective companies. Those are hard to find. And, and you want to be sure that you've truly got a company that is operating well. And that's one of the reasons I think folks should use a fee-only financial advisor. You can find one by Googling that. You can also find out more about dividend stocks and dividend stock portfolios in this video here. It's kind of part two to this video to find out more about dividend stocks. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Oh, before you leave, I almost forgot. Uh, behind me, any, any, uh, I can gar I can promise you that this is the only video uh, being filmed on dividend stocks at my current location. I'm just curious if anybody has any guesses, leave them in the option. Again, the video for dividend stocks you can find up here. Part two, dig in deeper and find out more. Thanks for watching, bye bye.